kids, Miss Kulkarni here. Let's continue with Bohr's atomic model and how it is applied for obtaining electromagnetic spectrum. So here are the two main principles of Bohr's model. Electrons are in different energy levels and of course he was perfectly correct. The second principle is electron revolving in planetary model which we know is not true. So here is the summary of principles. Electron cloud is made up of energy levels which are like the rungs of a ladder, steps of a ladder and they are not evenly spaced. Amount of energy which is possessed by electron that determines the energy level. Levels as we go away and away from nucleus the energy gets higher and higher and the most important thing is electrons like to hang out where they are more stable or that means at their ground state. Let's move on to more important principles. When electrons gain energy and that could be through a process of heat or electricity, the electron will jump up the energy level and that's called as excitation and this is of course a temporary excited state. Okay. Electrons cannot stay excited at such a high energy level forever. So when they fall back to ground state, they will lose their extra energy and a packet of light is emitted. So the process is called as a relaxation and the larger the fall, larger is the energy of light released. Here is simple figure to demonstrate the energy level diagram which Bohr proposed. So we have N here which is energy level for each of the orbital. Here's an electron jumping from level 1 and going to third one. When it does that, it is going to result in gain of energy. And when energy is absorbed, electrons get excited. So we call that process of excitation. And of course, the spectrum which is released is called as absorption. Over here, we have electron moving from third to first orbit. That means electrons are lost. And the process could be called as relaxation and the spectrum which we get is emission spectrum. Before we move on, let's fully understand Bohr's atomic model and how it is linked up to electromagnetic spectrum. So according to him, when electrons jump around, that results into different energy. And that means a different wavelength or color of light. Then one important thing is different elements will have different energies associated with the energy levels and that will result into different elements which produce different colors. Now can we break the visible light into smaller parts? Of course yes. So what we do is we pass the light ray through a prism or a spectroscope by which it can break it into individual colors and that's called as bright line spectra. And how does the bright line spectra help us? It tells us the identity of the element. Let's look at this pretty spectrum here. Here the light passes through the prism and then splits up into the different components. And this figure actually shows how the energy for electrons differ when they jump from one orbit to a different. This is an example of bright line spectrum and obviously you see multiple lines there for each of the element. Now what is the purpose of this? It is so specific for a particular element that we can actually use that as a main tool for identifying the unknown element. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye bye.